Ladies and gentlemen, the Question Vision and Robinsons are delighted to present the Funnel Factor. Will you please give a very warm welcome to William and Pippa Funnel. Touch and go for a minute then. I needed a lead. <laughs> um, thank you all for coming. It's a fantastic turnout. And our main aim this evening is hopefully to, to teach you a few things um, and also hopefully to give you a fairly entertaining evening. But I'll leave that bit up to my, my husband. But to start the evening, I've got a young horse here. She's, she's trying to say I'm the silly one already, isn't she? I've, I've got a young horse here called Laspen Rock Star, who's owned by Robert and Joe Tomkinson. He's, I think, very, very exciting. He's a six-year-old. But it's thanks to Rocky that I ended up getting him. I heard about him as a four-year-old. And after Rocky won badminton, I thought, right, I've got the money to go out and buy a nice young one. So hence I bought Apollo, we call him at home, and I liked him so much and I thought, oh dear, I don't want to be in a position of having to sort of sell him at some stage and lose the ride. So I sort of, Robert and Joe were looking for a horse and I thought, well great, this is one hopefully that we'll do them. But it is a fantastic opportunity for us to, to bring our young horses here because for this chap, he probably, well, hopefully, if he does go all the way, it's not until he gets right up the ladder of the sport that he'll get the chance to sort of work and, uh, and, and meet a, a large crowd of people. So it is a, it is a great opportunity for us with these, with these young horses. I'm on another young one. He's coming seven. He hasn't got quite such a posh name. We call him Kevin Z is his ring name, and in the stable we call him Kevin. Funnily enough. Um, and uh, Pip's going to show you. I'm going to work him round while Pip goes through some basic flat work with you. And then hopefully show you how some of that flat work, if it's not correct, can throw up problems in the show jumping. So I'll hand over to Pippa. When it comes to <clears throat> whether we're involved in eventing, show jumping, <clears throat> pure dressage, or even many of us might just have horses that we pack on the roads. To me, riding isn't necessarily about doing the sport we do. It's about doing something we love. And we have to remember on those wet mornings when we've got a lot of horses to ride, that we choose to do it because we love, we love horses. So one of the things I'm well aware of is I want it to be fun. Not just for me, I want my horses to have fun, I want them to be relaxed, I want them to be happy. And so it's all about keeping things fairly simple and making sure horses are in self-carriage. I don't want to sit on a horse and have to work seriously hard. My aim is to try and train them that I don't have to do too much, that I can stay nice and relaxed and they carry me. This is a horse that, he's six, he's weak, and he naturally tends to go a little bit on his forehand. But even though he's not yet ready to work in the more advanced outline, I make sure that I don't give him anything to lean on. The other thing, as you can tell, he's been very spooky. He's looking at a lot of things. I know as a rider, I want to build up the partnership between us. To me, that's one of the most important things, that they learn to trust me because of the demands, particularly, of our sport. So as you can see, he's spooking, he's a bit tense. But what I'm making sure, even though he's tense, I'm just all the time saying, it's all right, mate. <laughs> it's all right, mate. I'm with you. you know, 
All these people in here, yes, they're terrifying, but no, they're not going to hurt you. And so I'm making sure I stay nice and relaxed, even though he's uptight, because many of us go wrong that they see something and immediately we tighten up and tense that makes our horses more tight and tense. And that's not just in competition, that can, that can be on the road too. So it is about being firm, but not tough. You know, I've got to maybe say, come on with my leg, you know, it's all right. And then when I feel him relax, then I just soften it. Good boy. And then in the trot, I might just start doing just little sort of transitions within the trot. Good boy. So I just change the pace a little bit. So if I want to go forward a touch, he's got to come off a light leg. And then if I want to come back, whoa, good. Ask him to come back, maybe sit a little taller, close the leg and hold a little. When he's come back, then I'll soften him again. Then I want him to go forward off a light leg. Good, and back. And again, doing it all quite quietly, hardly touching him. And that's what I want them to do as young horses, is to train them off light leg aids. I don't want to kick hard. I don't want to keep kicking and kicking, because and, the more we kick, the, the deader our horses get to the leg. Good boy. And then into walk. I'll just take my time. Good, just stay relaxed. Good. It's very scary. Good boy. And trot. Good boy. Ooh, bit too sharp off the leg then. Good boy. Because that's the funniest looking camera he's ever seen. Good boy. Good. I just want you to do a nice, quiet transition into canter. Good. Now, I know with this horse, you know, he is a young horse. He's uptight. I don't expect him to do the sort of transition I expect my advanced horses to do. Hey, good boy. Oh, I know. Right, good. Just relax. That wasn't a very good transition. Good lad. Oh. Very scary, all these people, I know. He's planning, I'm planning to take him to a novice event on Sunday. So hopefully there won't be quite so much to look at there. Good boy. And if he's where I want him, then I just sit still. Good boy. Sit still, let him carry himself. Good. I can do the odd little check, see whether he's in self-carriage, but it's not very safe at the moment because he feels very might misbe misbehave. Good. If I want to sit him back up, I'll grow tall, tall, then relax and let him on again. Good boy. Good lad. Because he is very much <coughs> a horse this particular horse, he does get quite tight. He sees something and he does tighten his body. And you get some horses that are very bendy, you know, wiggly, and others that are stiffer. And I would say he's a little bit stiffer, but it's getting to know your horses as individuals and treating them, because they're all so different. And the final goal might be the same, but how we get to that final goal is very different according to the horses. Good. Oh, and trot. Good. Good boy. You can say something if you want, Willie. I think they turned me off for a minute there. I did go to say something, but it must have been my heavy breathing or something. Though. Good. I'm listening, I'm listening and learning. I've just been re repeating my transitions. They weren't really up to scratch for a minute then. Ooh. 
good. It's, uh, it's trying to just get him, because at the moment he's still a little bit uptight and he's not really letting me ride him. Now come. Good. Now back, back, back. Keep the leg. Good. And come again. Off the leg. Now back, leg, let me ride you. Good. But I was starting just to relax a little bit more. But I can feel he's slightly going down there. But as I said earlier, he isn't established enough yet to come right up and work like a more advanced horse. So the main point of, of, of me coming in here tonight is to get him nice and chilled, nice and relaxed, and making sure I'm nice and relaxed because, boy, I, know, I agree with him, it is daunting. Good boy. I, th I think, as you said, it's important with the young not to ask too much, to actually realise that they've got to get stronger to be able to hurry, to be able to, uh, to, to be strong enough to, to do what you want them to do in the end. So it's actually trying to do things correctly. And as you, as, as you have a, a pro every horse is different. Try and understand the horse as a problem comes up, try and work it out. Hey. Good. Good. You might think I yabber away a lot, but believe me, I do talk to my horses a lot. William's always telling me not, oh, not to talk so much. <laughs> Aren't you, darling? Yes, darling. He he's not used to people coughing either. Good boy. Oh, you are so good. Hey, oh. Now walk. You see, Kevin's still a bit fresh. <laughs> Do you think it's, he's, he's upset because we left Sharon at home? <laughs> good. I think he's pleased to see everybody. Now walk. Good. Hey. But even when you're out hacking, when you're out riding, it's making sure that if, you know, if they are yobbing and gobbing and gulping and pulling you around, don't be afraid to ride them. And I do quite, I mean, I, I don't have enough time, but I do do quite a bit of teaching when I can. And it's trying to make people not afraid to ride the horses, to ride what they feel. And to me, it is all about me thinking, what's he thinking? I know that sounds a bit balmy, but it is like similar to the horse whisperer. It is climbing into their brains to think, what's, you know, what is going on in that brain? And that's half the art with young horses. It's knowing when they're being naughty, knowing when they're genuinely worried and upset. Good boy. And how you go about solving those problems can be very, very different. So it's knowing, you know, are they being generally worried or are they generally a bit fri frightened or are they being naughty? Hey. Do you want me to leave you to get on and show your self-carriage bit? <laughs> You'll have to excuse the bucks from Kevin tonight. He's an, he's, he's an approved stallion. He um, sort of did every, everything he should have done as a six-year-old last year. Um, he was... Uh, he finished the year with, by being fourth in the Fox Hunter Championships, Championship at Horse of the Year show. Um, I think he jumped the most double clears in the six-year-old qualifiers for the Horse of the Year show. So basically, he's a horse I've got great hopes for for the future. Um, and as you can see, I've had a Kent around. Really, most of the problems is, Pips, is that we're aiming to get self-carriage. Are you you're still here? I, am, I haven't gone yet, because... As Pip said, the main thing, 
I want to get him. So he's in between my hands and my hands and legs. That basically he's carrying me. He's not actually put his head up then. I think he's chasing, he was chasing you then. See, he's a happy chap and he enjoys his jumping. He's actually seen a couple of jumps and he thinks, come on, here we go. So basically, what I want him to do is to be able to hold his own canter. He's not pulling me, he's not behind my leg. He's still trying to buck me off though. And then, basically I build up to doing some lengthening and shortening, but I'm staying in the same tempo, but I'm asking him to lengthen his canter. I want him to close it up, but I'm still keeping on the same rhythm. Still give him a hand away, just to show that he's carrying me. Hey. You see, he enjoys his changes. I think I should be more strict with him. He's actually been on holiday since it was the year show. He's been back at home about two weeks, so he's still quite uh, impressed with being ridden and coming in with everybody here. So, do the same on this rein. Bit of lengthening and shortening. These are the basic things that I want to train my young horses to do before I start jumping. So most of the problems, once you've got your canter and you've got your, horses, your horse carrying you, most of the problems at the jump come from before the fence. If a horse is carrying me around the corner, so I'm going to use this pole, just canter down over the pole. So all I'm doing, making sure he's carrying me. So many people say their horse rushes at the fence. So basically, start just because I've come around the corner, I'm still not taking up any more contact, I'm not putting any more leg and I'm not getting any, any tighter at all. Make sure he's carrying me around the corner, keeping it smooth. Good. If he does land and drag me to a half hole and show that when I land, he's carrying me again. So I'm prepared to come around the corner. He carries me down to the jump. Now we'll do the two in a row. One, two, three. So you can see there I did six strides. Quite simple, land, close him up so he's not, make sure he's not dragging me again, so I can go back, show that I'm in complete self-carriage, and, and he's actually holding his own canter. So still in the same rhythm, if I want to come around the corner, and I have seven, oh, a little bit short, could have been a little bit smoother, that time I had seven, we changed the rein and do it on the other rein, but still keeping the same, the same rhythm, but all I've done is, is Kevin, slightly shorten his canter. He's enjoying himself. We'll just come on the other rein, we'll make some crossbows. The basic problem, most people, they come round to a show jump, most people that I teach, same thing, because of the jump, they slow here, see the jump and then move forward to the jump. So straight away, you've broken your rhythm, you've thrown your horse out of balance. So the, mo the most, just because there's a fence there, you shouldn't see my canter alter here because there's a fence there. Still want to make sure he's carrying himself. still happy to be jumping because he's jumping the poles. I don't need to put him up. I don't think he jumps them anyway. We could just make uh, two cross poles there, please. So what you find is a similar problem. If you come around the corner and start to pull when you come to the corner, your horse is going to pull you to the fence. So if I find... So you never want, want to hold your horse or your pony for more than a couple of strides. So if I come around the turn to the fence, and he's pulling me and I pull against him, all you're going to do is make your horse and pony get strong at the fence. So straight away, if I come round the corner and he's pulling me, all I do is a half halt, soften again. Make sure that I don't end up allowing him to get strong in my hand. So I never allow him to lay on my hand. The same as Pippa said, don't allow. It's just exactly the same, smooth, relaxed. Good lad. Just circle over this one. So 
So still, he'd carry me. Good lad. Oh, still trying to buck me off. They said I should be strict to that. Good lad. One, two, three, four, five. Change. So we're still on the same rhythm. If I up my tempo, I had five strides between them. I mean, I haven't walked a distance, but basically it's the sort of thing I do at home just to play about with altering their strides. So you're changing gear all the time because, as I'll explain a little bit more later, if I come round the corner, everybody says, oh, well, you know, you always seem to get the right stride. And basically, if your horse is carrying you, it's easy because you, you will start to feel whether you're on the right stride. Even if, if, you, if your horse is in balance, if you pull, you pull him onto your hands, he falls out of balance. So if you don't get the wrong stride, it makes it worse. If you push him out the fence, then normally you get there too close because you pushed him out the fence and by pushing him he's gone out of balance. So it makes, if you have made a mistake, it makes it worse. The worst you could ever be when I come around the corner to be completely wrong at the fence is half a stride wrong. Now half a stride is only two yards. So two yards, all I've got to do in, in four strides, if I've got a completely wrong stride, is alter each stride that much. If I need to, lengthen or shorten, and I'm on the right stride. So that, if your horse is carrying you, is simple. The main problem is, is, is trying to teach people to actually come around the corner and not try, look for a stride too early. I don't need to see a stride that early because I can still keep it smooth. And if I need to, I can come around the turn. If I've got no stride at all, all right, I can come back, break the rim, but I'm still not holding him. So I actually had a couple of extra, but I still didn't, actually get him so he got strong in my hand. I'm going to open my tempo. We had five strides before. Try and get him to open his canter. Then we had four. So we had, oh, he is enjoying himself this evening. Good lad. You know, I think there's got to be a certain amount of, yes, you want him to enjoy yourself, or you don't want to lose a class because he's bucked and been disobedient. Now we're going to just close the canter. Here's quite a short six strides up there. I'd like to have, to make sure, I'd like to have had all six strides the same. As you can see, I had to check a little bit more in the middle and probably the middle couple of strides were shorter. So let me just do that once more. Gonna land, sit up. It's better. So we land on the wrong lead. When I land, and the same. This another thing that I see so much when I go to a show is people jump a practice jump. You know, every time I land, I'm thinking of leg back on. Make sure he's in, in between my hand and my leg. So every time I jump a fence, I want to balance him before the corner. So if there was another fence here, it'd be balanced and ready to jump it. I mean, so often you're at a show and you see, just because it's a warm-up fence, that uh, thinks it's a speciality that you see. They jump the warm-up fence, everything's nice in front of the fence. And then, oh, you know, look around, did I knock it down, you know, and then stop, you know, and then, you know, allow the horse to go on his forehand, not actually ask him to do anything with it. And then when you go in the ring, jump a fence, he's, oh, you know, because you've got to be consistent to tell him, ask him the, what you want to do. And you, then you need to be strict with yourself to say, yes, land, balance him. If there was another fence there, he'd be ready to jump it. Right, that's hopefully a little bit of his, uh, how important the flat work is in show jumping. I would say 90% of the time when people come to me with a problem with a show jumping that we'd probably spend more time cantering over poles and over cross poles and on the flat than we would jump in any bigger because most of the problems here come from before the corner that the horse actually isn't carrying the rider. And if he's carrying me, it makes it so much easier. When I come around, if, when, in, if you're in a Grand Prix, there's so much to do anyway. You're trying to see the right strike, you're trying to keep the right line. Um, so you don't want to be thinking about your horse hauling off with you, 
things go wrong then. Right. I think I can hand over to her ladyship again. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are delighted this evening to have a very special guest. Some of you might recognise him. But Pippa this evening is riding Denise and Roger Lincoln's Primor's Pride. As many of you know, he won the Lexington three-day event and the Burley three-day event to win the Grand Slam. Ladies and gentlemen, Pippa Funnel and Primor's Pride. A very well of Primor's Pride, who um, is feeling well, like all my horses. At this time of year, to me, it's actually one of the worst times of year because they're just about to start and they're feeling really fit and ready to run now. And um, it's always, it is quite difficult. Once you get going and get to a competition and get them running, then they seem to, it takes the edge off them. But he's feeling extremely well, which is a very good thing. So I'm making excuses for myself already before I even start, but I'm sure we will have a few wiggles and a few bucks. But from my point of view, I think it's quite nice with the long season ahead that, they, that he is feeling like that. I'm e extremely honoured to have, be able to have horses of, of his calibre. Obviously him and Rocky are, are very, very um, dear to my heart. They, for sure, they would be to anyone if, if you can get a paycheck like I got out of the two of them. Um, but they are very, very special, but very, very different. The only thing, well, I suppose you walk into my yard, people often say, what, what type of horse do you like? And I'd say, well, if you walk into my yard at home, you'd say, I like bay geldings, because I've got 14 bay geldings. And obviously, t the tourmaline rose is the only mare and the only grey I've got. Otherwise, they're all bay geldings. But Kiri has been one of those very special horses from, from day one, I would say, out of all the horses I've ever had. From the first time I sort of laid eyes on him as a two-year-old, I did think this horse has just got something quite special. And so he's, because of that, he's actually, the expectations have been very high. And so he's had a lot to live up to. Denise and Roger obviously thought the same as what I thought. That's why they bought him as a foal. And the expectation, so he's had a lot of pressure under, put under him, you know, because of that high expectation. But boy, last year did he come up with the goods. Tonight, I thought might just be quite fun, is I'm going to take you through my warm-up. For, for a dressage test and hopefully then try and ride through a test. But uh, I'm chatting away here, letting him take it all in, walking around in a relaxed way, because that's what I would first do at a major international three-day event. That's the first thing I'll do when I go up to the warm-up area, say before Badminton or Burley, I will walk just in a nice, relaxed way. Obviously, if they're feeling very bright and it feels as though I can't walk, then I'll probably canter them around off their back. But I do think the warm-up is a very, very crucial part. And again, it comes back to knowing your horse as individuals, how much they need for their warm-up. And for sure, tonight, I can say, I haven't got enough time to warm him up, how I'd warm him up in an event but I'm going to have to make do with the time I've got. So, yeah, as I'm walking around, yeah, very relaxed, let him take it all in before I pick him up. And I know tonight I might have to sit a bit tight, but while I'm walking around, I'll just be aware myself that I've got to be nice and relaxed through my thigh, through the knee, because when it comes to picking horses up, I'm a great believer that Obviously, the straightness to me, they've got to be forward in front of the leg, carrying themselves, and the straightness to me is one of the most important things. But how, how can our horses be straight if we're not straight? And I can tell you now, I'm not straight. 
I have to be really, really aware the whole time on the right rein that I don't collapse my right hip and slightly slip to the outside. It's something I've always done. It's something I always have to be aware of. And I really am a very, very strong believer that people often wonder, you know, why when I go and ride through tests that the horses are quite relaxed. And I really believe it's because my main thing I work on every day at, my, at home is myself. And it's unbelievable. You ask the question, I do, you know, when I've done clinics and various things, and actually at the last demo, I actually threw the question out to the audience, which I forgot to do tonight, asking what the main thing people work on. And they all go with what they work on, you know, having the horse forward, having them straight, keeping them in front of the leg, which is all very correct, which is what I work on. But no one ever says they work on themselves. And it's making sure you have that self awareness. Am I doing these things? Am I causing the problem? Good boy. He's a look to look at. He says that he's not used to the crowds being quite so close. Um, so it is being aware that we're not causing the problems that are going on underneath us. How many of us here, how many of you have horses? Do a lot of you have horses here? Yeah, basically quite a few of you. And how many of you have horses that are slightly stiff one way? Yeah, quite a lot of you. And it's amazing you have a horse, say, that's, that's a little stiffer in, in, say, the right side. And all the time, you're working, working, working to free up that right side, to ask to get the give. And all the time you're working, you're actually probably working against yourself. Because I know I collapse the right hip and he sets, he's a bit stiff right, but rather than working, working on his right rein, I'll think, I've got to put myself in the right place that I don't collapse that hip and I don't throw his shoulder out. Yeah? Do you, does that make sense? So because I collapse there, which throws his shoulder out, so then he's difficult to turn, so then I come more onto my right rein. The more I come onto the right rein, the more I collapse. So the more I'm causing the problem. So I have to make sure I jump my weight over. If you collapse that way, if you actually look over your outside shoulder, I don't know whether you can see, so if I naturally collapse that way, I'm over-exaggerating it. If I look there, straight away, it's, it's difficult for you guys to see, but straight away, by being aware of looking over my outside shoulder, letting go here through my inside thigh, stop looking. Good boy. Letting go through that inside thigh so I'm actually sitting straight myself. I straighten myself up. Because if we're not in balance as a rider, if we're not sitting centrally in the saddle, we can't stay soft. We can't stay relaxed. We have to grip. We have to be tight. And if we grip and are tight, then when we ask for more movement, it's got nowhere to go. It's like I had Chris Bartle, wonderful saying he said to me, is if you're tight through the knee and thigh as you're asking them to, to put more energy from behind and engage the back end, if you're tight there, it's like a gymnast doing gymnastics in a tight pair of Levi jeans. I thought that was a wonderful saying. And how true it is. So, so when I'm warming up, oh, he's going to have a little wiggle and a... And a yeah, good boy, and uh, I'll wait for the ander. Good boy. Now, with him in the warm-up, I actually do normally work him longer and lower. But I'm a little bit nervous, I'll be honest, about doing that here because I know what he's like at this time of year. And if I get him too <laughs> round and deep in front to start with, if he does buck then I know where I'm going to be. <laughs> Good boy. So I've got to be quite good, positive with my leg. He is, when he's bright like this, I know he's a bit cheeky about accepting it. He gives me that feeling that he won't let me put it on it, on him. So I got to make sure I get my leg on and say, come on, accept the leg. 
Good boy. Yeah, we'll stay very quiet. It's probably not used to my, my voice being quite so loud. Good. So as I'm riding round, got to think, relax the thigh, let his back come up. Good. And I can do, like the other horse, little checks to see if he's coming away from the leg. So I might start just playing around, maybe just asking him to step away from my right leg, just quietly stepping away, and he's got to accept it. I know he's bright, and then straight again. Good boy. Just little things, just quiet exercises, just get him to come off one leg. Wait, I don't want too much bend. Good. I just want you to stay straight and me to stay straight. Good. It's amazing to me where people go wrong in warming up for tests often is they expect the horses to be going how they want them in the arena half an hour, 40 minutes before. So I want to make sure that my, step away from the left leg now, now let go of my right thigh, over, go on, and then straight. Good. So I want to make sure that my best work is in the arena. Now I want you to bend a bit more, yeah, and get there. I want you to go over, right over, right over, just get there. Good. I'm just opening that, what, right, that left hand to help me get my left leg on because, I don't know, we all have this thing about the hand comes too much into the equation. If your horse falls in, you pull on, people naturally want to pull on the outside rein. If it falls out, they naturally want to pull on the inside rein. I hope if I had the right diagonal. Good boy. Yeah. Now just step over off the right leg. Good. Over. Good. Good boy. Yeah. It's that arm again. Wait. Wait and let me ride you. Wait and let me ride you. So if I do have to take, if I have to say with my arm, wait, that's fine as long as I soften again. And it's very tempting, particularly with horses that are a bit brighter or a bit spooky, that we tighten. We tighten the arm, we tighten the leg. Wait, wait, now soften. Good. Wait, wait. When I say wait, I try to think, let it come up. I've got to allow it to come upwards. Now soften again. Good. Wait. Keep, ah, 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 in front of the leg. Wait. Wait. Now soften again. Good. Right, away from my right leg again. Wait. Good. Good. Over. Long in my right leg. Good. Just get there. Good. Good boy. I want to have a canter now. But I'm a bit worried what might happen when I ask for it. Good boy. Wait, same thing, I've got to give him warning. Yeah, cheeky. Now I want to sit tall, stay relaxed, and I still feel as I want to get a bit more leg on. So I've got to somehow try and get him past this stage of feeling that when I ask a bit more with the leg, he mustn't feel as though he wants to buck. 
and explode. So, you know, I've got to be firm, but quiet and firm. Good. Just every now and then, I'm doing just little tests with my leg to see, can I get a bit more on? Then if I come back, I've got to bounce. Think of bouncing and lightening my seat. Little test, and on again. And bounce and back. Good. And if he's where I want him, if he feels nice, the can't... Oh, you, you are little... Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I have to sit tight and I think, I need a crash helmet and a body protector. <laughs> yeah, you pay attention, mister. It might just help too. I just have noticed a few, few fat flashlights going off. So if we can just maybe wait until I've <laughs> finished and take some at the end. Good. Yeah. Good boy. Now step away from my left leg. Go on. I know you're not really with me, and he's a big horse when he's like this. Good boy. But this is all good, you know. He's feeling well. And this is the sort of thing I might get at a competition. So I've got to think, what have I got to do to ride him through all of this? Yeah, mister. Good. So I've got to be a bit firmer if he's a bit cheeky. Yeah. Good. Someone wearing something funny down there. <laughs> you are wicked. Yeah. Okay, I'll take a bit of shoulder in there. Good. As he's got making a thing about someone there. Don't like to embarrass you. <laughs> yeah. You come here and behave yourself, mister. You think this is bad? You should have seen Rocky when I did some of these with Rocky last year. Good. Better. And on, off the leg. Good. And back, tall. Go on. Yeah, wicked. But same thing, I must still be aware, just because he's feeling a bit bright, I must still be aware to, to soften, which isn't easy when you're half anticipating them to buck and be silly. Yeah. Come here. Come here. Good. Again, I'm keeping a little bit of bend to the outside, try and send them forward off that, my new, my, what was my outside leg that's now my inside leg. Good. It wasn't that good, but it, was, well, it felt pretty true. Yeah, you just pay attention. Yeah. Now, look over my outside shoulder. Must have clapped my inside hip. Good. So I can let go of my right thigh. And it, just every now and then, I had to just do a little walk down the left, left rein. Good. Here, think of my shoulder, think of bringing his shoulder round. And I might think, what have I got to do to bring him round without my right rein? Because I know I'm tempted to grab hold with my right rein. So I've got to make myself think, right, what have I got to do that I don't have to bring him round on that right rein? Good. Good boy. Down and look behind me. I can feel myself doing it. But it is about being so 
disciplined. Ooh, whoa. Good boy. And walk. Now have we got over this little bit here? Good boy, have a little rest, little stretch. Ooh, you are wicked. Good boy. So I will then just have a little, let him have a little stretch. Same thing in the warm up, I will do that. Bit of work, pick them up, maybe give them another stretch again. And I always make sure before my test again that they have a stretch, a little breather, give myself a breather, give myself time to relax and get rid of those competition nerves that I'm sure we all suffer. I'm just going to do a few more transitions just to, to check. And what other things I've got to try and... Uh, forget, forgetting what else I need to work on before I ride through this test. Good boy. No. That's the other very common thing with event horses. Well, probably dressage horses as well. That anticipation. He's got to walk until I ask him to canter. Good. Yeah, good. You pay attention, mister. And then prepare. I've got to prepare him. If I want to go into canter, I've got to prepare it. So I'll shorten the walk slightly before I canter. Listen. Little checks to think, is he still listening on the aids? Good. Keep him on the aids. Good. Wait. Wait for me and let me ride you. Wait. Good. Wait. Good. No, that was too slow off the leg. Too slow. I know there's a lot of distraction. Good boy. Better, but still not good enough. Yeah. Come. I want to pick you up a bit now. Yeah, come. Come. Walk. Good. You're not listening to me at all at the moment. Come on. Good. Nah. Horrible. 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 We're not going to. We're not going to get to do our burly test at the moment. Certainly not going to get far if you get to Athens behaving the way you are. So you've got to get your act together, mate. Wait. Wait. Now listen to me. Good. Better. Yeah, this is all, this is all, let's face it, I think we, we're doing a classic demonstration of horses aren't machines. They all have personalities. Yeah. Good boy. No, wait, trot. Now I've got to remember, just because he's a bit uptight, I've got to still try and remember to stay relaxed myself. Wait, let me ride you. Canter. I don't know whether any of you notice the way I'm yabbering away. It's as much it's a mental thing to help myself, I'm telling myself what to do the whole time. Like when I say wait, I stretch up, hold a little, and then soften and get my leg there. Wait, leg. Soften, let me ride you. Good. Right, are we going to try this test? If you imagine, if you try to imagine that I'm at a three day event, and what I'm going to do is talk you through the test exactly what's going on in my brain and how much I think as I'm working through the test, what I think about. Good. So, right, I'm trotting around the outside. We forget about the bell. Am I riding towards you? Are you the judge, Mr. Cameraman? He's not even listening. <laughs> Come. Good. You little. 
Yeah, you behave yourself. So I've got problems here, but I've got to still start this test despite what's going on underneath me. So I've got to see what have I got to do to try and ride him through this in the test. And mister, your food's been cut down. Right, so I've got to think straightness, straightness, soft and seat wall. God knows if that's square, but I'm not looking down. <laughs> trot, trot, straight, turning left at the end, inside leg, prepare for the shoulder in, <laughs> round the inside leg and shoulder across. Relax myself. Good. Imagine I'm looking in the mirror. Half circle, 10 meters, into half pass, go on. Over, over. Come. Stay soft, stay relaxed, Mrs. Funnel. Good. Wait, wait. Let me ride you. Soften that inside thigh. Drop my outside shoulder. Bring that shoulder in. In off the track. A bit more bend. Go on, a bit more bend. Good. Go on, keep it. Let it come. Go on. Down with my outside shoulder. Round. Now over. Soften my right thigh. Let him step across. Good. Wait. Good. Good. Wait for me. Thinking now about the medium trot. Wait. Now come. Come. Stretch up tall and back. Keep the rhythm. Try not to nod my head. <laughs> Extended, ride the back end. Go on, ride the back end. Tall, ride it. Back, soften. Prepare the walk, take my time. Good. Have a breather. <laughs> Relax everything. Time in the test to breathe. Good. Steady. Wait. Check my weight. I'm sitting across him. Outside leg. Round. I'm breathing heavily. Good. Now I've got to start to think of the canter. Steady. Wait and don't anticipate it. You don't kick out at these poor people at A. Wait. Wait. Better. Now wait. Tall. Relax the thigh. A little bit more give and go. Don't buck. Oh, okay, we'll forget that quick. We've got to make up marks now. Come. And back, back. Pay attention. Tall. Now I've got to think half, 10 meter circle. Long in the leg, wait for me. Wait and keep them straight. And counter, counter. Good. Tall. Mustn't collapse in the counter, counter. Wait. Think of the chain. Prepare it. Oh, Hey, hey, hey. Sorry, I shouldn't make you laugh. Good. Hey. Tall, long in the leg. Good. Relax. Good. 
and medium. Go, no, go, 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 go. Good. And back. Bounce, long the leg, drop my outside shoulder. Good. Round. I'm actually going to do my change earlier. So I think I might just be in trouble if I do it a long time. Good. Good. Because I did my change there, my test has gone wrong because I'm going to end up halting at C. But A. Good. Oh, turn centre line. Straight, 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 that, straight. Prepare the hold. Whoa. Whoa. Good boy. Thank you. Oh, here we go. Put it on back. Good. And I've decided Pip seems to go out every weekend and come back with all these trophies. I don't, she doesn't need to ring me to tell me how she's got on. I have to I see it in the news half the time. So uh, I've got this horse. He's jumped a few 120s. And I jumped a 3 foot 11 log on him the other day. So it should be all right for badminton, I think. So all I need, I've been listening a little bit to Pip earlier, is to uh, get the dresser sorted out. And uh, I should be there. So perhaps you could give me a hand, Pip, in a minute, could you? <coughs> you naughty boy. But as I said earlier, really, you know, at this stage in the season, it's quite nice. They are feeling this well and bright. Um, Mr. Funnel, I think... How, I, how am I looking? I think you need to take those off for a sec. Why do all show jumpers insist on wearing draw reins? Well, he puts his head up, otherwise. Running reins. Can you stop? Because I'm going to take oh. them up, off for a start. God. And you can stick your stirrups down as well. Oh, no. I know she'd start all this. Oh, that feels a bit painful. He is right wearing the wrong kit, isn't he? It just so happens. We Don't did. I get to do all the dressing up. It did take us an extremely long time to get a tailcoat big enough to fit William. <laughs> She's actually lying. This is one of Pips. <laughs> She's bigger than she looks. Right, Mr. Funnel. Relax your thigh and knee. Oh, God, dear me. Yeah. Relax them too much. Nice and relaxed. Actually, you've lost weight. <sighs> Probably because we've got, got no food in the house. <laughs> got a bigger jacket, right. Right. Stretch up very tall, and I want you to think of being quite relaxed because I'm a bit uptight tonight. So Ooh, think yeah, of being, right. yeah, it does pull across the shoulders a bit. Right. Very tall, very relaxed in the leg. Ooh. And let yourself well, bounce. Hardly reach them. Let yourself um. bounce so you allow him to bring his back up. Where are your gloves? I don't, girls wear gloves, don't they? <laughs> right. So, right. So what do you want to do? Well, you do that sideways stuff, don't you? OK, so think about putting his head and neck on the diagonal line, yeah? But, but a bend, so pick a line, yeah? And then ask the back end to follow. Watch the back end, no, the haunches mustn't lead. Oh, that looks rather smart. Go on, uh, back end. Oh, dear me. 
trailer. Well, it was a bit wobbly and a bit inconsistent. Got a lot to think about. Well, is, is, we're on the wrong lake now. For the corner. <laughs> we'll put a change in that. Oh. oh, right. All my horses buck on their changes, don't they? Maybe so, just a touch more forward in the change. Well, I'm not going to say, tell you how to ride changes, because there you're a show jump, and you should have seen my changes earlier. A little Ooh. bit sideways. That looks rather smart. I'm getting the hang of it, I think. I'm watching you going round. Oh, now, this, now we're on the wrong leg. Again. Right. And now, well, then, putting a change. What do we do? Lean in. Lean in, yeah. Oh, smart git. <laughs> Is that what she was trying to do for the last half an hour? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was. Oh. Uh. Whoa. My show job, he's not used to clapping because I've only had him at some local shows, so it'd be good if he gets used to it for badminton, actually. Oh my god! Where did you learn that one from? Right, I think I've got all that sorted out. Cause... Well, let's see, you Can... let's see you bounce a bit. Oh dear, oh no. <laughs> I um, think you've got to do some extended trots. I, I, I know I watched Pip and you need your head to wobble, don't you? <laughs> so let me get, if I could get enough head wobbling, I have practiced this, <laughs> then I can normally get him to take quite big steps. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, I think I did the head wobbling there. Eh? Go on again. Did I overdo it? I want to see you suffer. Go on, extend your trot. Go on. Go on. Go on. <laughs> well, let me try that once more, I think. Well, I've, I've, had a, I've had a little bit of trouble. Oh, probably with my microphone, I'm sitting on my wire. <laughs> Alex, with this, he keeps doing these funny, bumpy trucks. <laughs> and I don't know whether he's trying to trot or canter. <laughs> oh, he nearly was cantering there. What? What I'll do you tell think? You do what? I need that one at badminton, Pip? <laughs> Darling, uh, you, you, you are so talented. <laughs> I did not know yeah. you had this talent. You're, you're a hell of a good trainer, Pip. <laughs> <laughs> On that note... <laughs> That's nice. And the head. <laughs> Sideways. Backwards. Fast trot. Everything. Hold on. I wanted to, to just have a quick chat because I'm sure there are quite a lot of people here tonight, or, or younger people particularly, that that maybe do get quite nervous before they compete and, and whether you show jump or event or whatever, you know, nerves can affect. And, and I know, because believe me, I've been down that road and, and I had, I've had a lot of help from that aspect because when I was younger and I, I had fantastic training, I was very lucky because I was with an amazing lady called Ruth McMullen for eight years and she taught me so much about the basics. And it's really thanks to Ruth that, touch Ginny wood, Pete. my dressage is, is, is 
normally, okay, I didn't show it tonight, but normally um, one of my stronger phases. And I obviously had such great success with Barnaby. And I just quickly touch on Barnaby because the, there are, I know from outside, there are a lot of children, younger people here tonight. And I do want to stress to you that if you have a dream, no matter how much you annoy your parents, but follow that dream. And because I do feel I'm a great believer if it happened to me, why shouldn't it happen to any one of you? Um, okay, quite a lot of work, a lot of help from a huge backup team, but it really is possible. But going back to Barnaby, he was my pony club horse and he took me all the way through to my dream, to riding at badminton. And I had some fa fantastic results with him at Young Riders and, and that level and, and obviously at Gatcombe. But then I did go through sort of five and six years where I took horses up the ladder, they went, went very well at three-star level, got to Badminton, Burley, and it all went belly up. And I know it's been very well documented, but to me, I felt a large part of the jigsaw that was missing was the fact that I couldn't deal with, with my nerves. And I was then very fortunate that I had the fantastic little coloured horse, Bits and Pieces, that really sort of, I think, put me back on the map again and, and really gave me the feeling of what it was like to have a great ride around those top tracks. And because of the way he went, I got put onto the sort of the lottery system and the, the, the lottery funding came available in the sport, but with the funding came the sports science side, which involved the, the psychologist, sports psychologist. And I sort of listened. And I've always been very, very open-minded. I love having help. I love being trained. Because I always think, if you're being taught by someone or whatever, if you can gain something so minute, and hopefully tonight, maybe many of you here will go away thinking one thing might have stuck in your head. And that one thing could one day make a difference. And that's always been my view, because I used to watch, like probably many of us, 100 meter sprinters. They're, they're, they're split by such a minute difference. It's hundreds of a second, the difference between winning and losing and the Linford Christie's. And they're very, all very similar, probably the way they train, all very similar. But what is that difference? And it always fascinated me, this, and I've, I've sort of listened to various talks. And you think, gosh, the margin is so minute. And then this year made it, it really highlighted to me, or rather last year, with the three big ones, with the Grand Slam, because Kentucky, the difference was, well, I finished on the same score, but because I was one second closer to the optimum time, I, I won it. Then at Badminton, 0 0.4 was the difference. <laughs> and then again at Burley, I think probably many of you might have seen, okay, it was, the margin was bigger, but if Zara had jumped clear, I would have lost it, finishing on the same score. I would have lost it by one second. And that just shows such a minute mar margin between winning and, and coming second. Probably that's even a smaller percentage than your 100 meter sprinters, if you, if you take into account we're over three days, three different phases. And so what was that difference between winning and losing? And that's where I'm a great believer. If the slightest thing can help, then that could be that difference. And I went, Nikki Heath was the sports psychologist involved, and I went home to William and I said, you know, I think I, I'm going to see a sports psychologist. And he said, well, I've been saying for years you should go and see a shrink. <laughs> and um, so I went, and, and basically my problem, I felt, was the nerves at the big events with the cross country, because that was the phase that it always seemed to be that I went belly up in. And... I discussed the whole format with her, what I did, my system at home, what I believe were my good points, what I believe were my bad points. Then I discussed 
what I do with, when I go to a one-day event with four or five horses, and then my system at the three-day event. And she said, well, it's very obvious. It's, it's uh, doing the jargon, white coat jargon. It's paralysis by analysis. Basically, at the three-day events, the big events, Babington's, Burleys, getting there, one horse or maybe two over a whole week, suddenly I've got all that time to think. So it was, that was what was doing it, the nerves, making the nerves bad, because I, I had too much time to think. And just from the point of view of walking courses, I used to, I didn't really have a system, whereas now I have a very definite system. What I used to do, I used to walk it with fellow competitors and my mates, and I'd walk up to a fence and think it was all right, and then I would hear all their worries about this particular fence. So suddenly these new things were coming into my head, which didn't relate necessarily to the partnership of myself and my horse. And if I was worried about a fence, I would, for instance, walk up to a corner, a left-handed corner. And what I used to do, I used to think, God, that is a hideous corner. And I'd think of all the times I'd run out of the left-handed corner. And it wouldn't enter my head the amount of times I've jumped one. So now I'm very definite. If I walk a fence I don't like, I think of all the times I've jumped one similar well. But I take into account I might have had a run-up, so I've got to do, be ready for that. But I'm very, very channeled in the way I'm thinking. So the first walk I walk solely on my own, and I don't let other people's sort of thoughts come into it. The second walk, we're very, very lucky, obviously in this country, because we have Yogi Breisner, who, who I've got huge respect for, and he does, um, he, he does the second walk with me, and we go through it fence by fence, and then the last walk, I walk on my own again. Otherwise, I will not let my brain drift on, onto it. Because another thing I used to do, going back seven, eight years, if I was worried about a fence, I would, we're lucky in our sport because everyone's so friendly, so willing to help. So I would go to someone like Mark Todd and say, you know, I'm really worried about this fence. How do you jump it? How do you think you should jump it? So he'd tell me. And then not being happy with that, I'd then go to Ian Stark and ask him about the same fence. He'd tell me something completely different. I'd then go to someone else. Lucinda, maybe, or Ginny, they'd tell me again something completely different. So I didn't know whether I was coming or going. So, as I said, I listen to Yogi, what he has to say. I've got full respect for him. Then, the other thing I do, apart from, as I said, apart from the three walks, I don't let my mind dwell on the matter, except I give myself an hour on cross-country morning where I'm completely alone. I do not want to be in, um, disturbed. Well, I sit in the lorry, or I get in the lorry, and I get my stuff organised. I don't know whether any of you here, when you're nervous, you sort of go to get your gloves. Where are my gloves? Or you go to find your crash helmet, can't find it. And it's always in the same place, but for some reason, because you're so nervous, you can't find anything. So I give, get myself it all organised in a pile, and then I rise through the course very, very positively in my head. Otherwise, I won't let myself think about it. If I find myself, like at night, my mind drifting onto that fence is growing so big in my imagination, it's like jump, it is like jumping off beachy head. But I won't let myself think that now. I really won't. And, and I do, and it's a well-known fact, I do p spend hours playing on my phone on my phone game because it takes my mind away from from thinking all these negative thoughts and it is very common it's it's very common in human nature that we do get negative and i can it's 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 an easy thing for people particularly people close to me saying look what you've achieved look look what you've done but when you're lacking sort of self confidence it's, it's not very easy to just think positive and not negative, but I have learned a system, and it's becoming easier and easier to me. The other thing I used to do, which is a very common thing, I used to, um, on the cross-country, again, at the big events, 
If I came to a fence and I had interfered too much with the horse on the approach, I'd land and I'd think, why did I do that? I must not do that at the next fence. I must not interfere with it coming into the next fence. So I'd come to the next fence and I'd do the opposite. I'd go yahoo instead of... And because I'd got, got it so much in my head that I mustn't hook, I mustn't interfere, I'd go completely the other way. And so rather than thinking, I must not interfere now, I'll just think, I must keep a rhythm. Which is the, it's the same thing, but it's just the slight, you know, I don't let those sort of negative words come into my head at all. And, and it's amazing the effect it, it, it has and the tricks your, your brain plays on you. The other key thing, really key thing, which I believe to arrive at an event positive, I know I have to feel that no stone has been left unturned in the preparation. There's no point in getting to event th and a big three-day event and thinking, why didn't I do this? Why didn't I give it more counter work? Why didn't I practice angle rails? Because it's too late once you get there. So I know if I can arrive there, preparation, you know, not a stone left unturned, then I can be very positive. But then things, life throws you think, difficult things, doesn't it, at times? And that, uh, for instance, at, at badminton, the year Rocky first won it, I had had a bad fall, ruptured some ligaments in my ankle. So the preparation, as you can imagine, went belly up. So I thought, well, how do I turn that into a, neg a, a positive? And all I could focus on when these negative thoughts were coming into my head, all I could think of was what was positive, right? The thing that's the most positive is finally I'm arriving at a three-day event well-rested. I wasn't going to be arriving there having done five horses the weekend before at a one-day event. I hadn't ridden for three weeks, so I felt like a million dollars. So that was what I, I concentrated on, to turn that whole sort of bad preparation into a huge positive. And I really can't stress enough, the power of mind is unbelievable. And I think, I don't, I'm not just saying that in sport, I, I think that is, is the same in all walks of life. And hopefully it makes me slightly more balanced, but William won't agree with that. You know, William's m mastered the art of dressage, as we've seen, so we'll see whether he can master the art of, of cross country. <laughs> I told you I get to do all the dressing up. But I've just been listening. I've left no stone unturned in my preparation. So, uh, I'm out on the roads and tracks at the moment. Will it's, it's a sort of jolly in the country, isn't it? There's Babington House, huh? <laughs> William is riding. What time are we going to be back for gin? William is riding um, a, a, a new horse that I've taken on. I rode it in an event last year, and he, he, he's, I, I think he's a lovely horse. He's quite weak behind, a lot of work to do. He's an eight-year-old. I'm going to try he's, and teach him a bit of dressage as well for all I'm going to I know, can you... Can try you, and sort you, the changes out. Okay. I'm not going to live that down there. Um, but he's a horse called Shamrock, and he's actually, interestingly enough, he's, he's, he's by Rock King, which is the same. Rock King was the sire of the young horse I had earlier tonight, so we've got two Rock Kings at home. I'm not sure about this girdle either. <laughs> Your girdle, is that a bit tight? Oh, it is. You love dressing up, though, don't you, <laughs> Willie? <laughs> don't, don't embarrass me now. But when, when it comes to the cross country, you can, it's amazing actually, I mean, you can see here, our little bags of shavings, you don't necessarily need anything smart at home. On time, so. it's all right. You're on time? No, I'm on time, yeah. <laughs> I've just gone past for a minute marker for the steep track, for the uh, Rosen track. I'm nearly at the steep track. <laughs> Good boy.
good boy. Oh, dear. No, you're not thinking too much oh. about this cross-country course, are you? No, I've seen my psychologist. And he's just said... <laughs> says, don't think about it at all. So I was thinking about the football, actually. How well, Ars <laughs> how well Arsenal are doing in the league. And... I wonder what that chap in the big house at Badminton's doing, so... I'll just go have a kent around before I steal a chase, good boy. All right. So they do it. Oh, I'm beeping again. That means I'm, I've got to start. Three, two, go. Good luck. <laughs> Steve, which eyes are on? There's a... Look out, there's a jump. Boom! <laughs> so, still on time. Done that bit, check the shoes. Yeah. Yeah, they're all on. Another trot round. Good boy. Yeah. No time penalties. All right. I've got to trot round so, for another five minutes, yeah. While you're while you're trotting round, we'll just go a bit serious for a minute. I am known as Mrs. Serious, and you can tell who the, the, the you know the, well you can tell it's easy tonight to work out who the serious member of our household is. I know this completely stupid one is. <laughs> but anyway... Somebody has to be silly, especially when the, the event season's just starting. God, dear, you know, like she said, no stone, no stone unturned. Oh, my... This one's going badly. They're going terrible on the flat. I don't know what, how it's going to go up. It's terrible. I get that. Oh, well, she's in the lead, yes. They must have been going really bad. She's never happy. I don't know whether it's a... No, well, sometimes She's happens. really easy to live with, obviously, yeah. <laughs> You love me, really. Oh, dear. Oh. Anyway, can I just oh, be serious for oh. a minute? Because while... while... Oh. 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 Good boy. <laughs> what are you... William, what are you doing? I'm in the ten-minute box. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we supposed to throw a bucket of water over at this stage? <laughs> oh, no, that's at the end, isn't it? Sorry. Good boy. He's he not nervous. He is have, you, nervous. have you got your thermometer? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I, I forgot that bit. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, he's fine, actually. Heart rate. Yeah, no, he's looking good, actually. Oh, I don't know about me, though. I'm a bit nervous. I can do it with a psychologist. Again. Oh, this, I don't know why I do this sport. Oh, all those jumps. Excuse me, I've, I've got to go and be... Oh, oh that's it. Oh, I'm empty now. Right. Uh, two right. minutes, Mr Funnel. Right. Oh, no, it's not my go, is OK, it? right, while well, you've got your ten minutes, cos we, we're actually not going to jump straight round this course, cos we, we are going to do some individual fences. I wish I hadn't got fences. off now. <laughs> means I've got to get on again. Do you want a leg? Well, especially with my girdle on. Hang on, hang on, there's a leg. Whoa, 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 whoa. Too late. Give us a push. Oh. Cross country... Uh, what I've been trying to say for the last five minutes, ten minutes. Cross country is all about confidence. Building up the partnership, which to me, the most important thing, is building up that partnership. And to me, it helps. I love having them from youngsters. I love starting them off at a very young age. Obviously, with this horse, he is new and he is an older horse, so it will take a little bit longer to, for him to gain the trust in me, for me to gain the trust in him. And so we do do quite a few I of these think, little he, exercises. He's Shut trust, up. First. Exercises at home. fairly trusting at the moment. Just warm him up to start with. Oh. It's an event where you're allowed to, they're allowed to hit them. I think I'd better put some grease on him. But it is all about confidence, giving the horses confidence. And they, to me, it's very important it that they do enjoy their job. 
And you, you can enjoy it too. Yes, we're having great fun. <laughs> Good. When you're happy with that, do you want to jump down, down the angled rails? Yeah. Down, down the hill or up the hill? Down the hill. Right, all right. And make sure you stick on your line, in the middle, stick in the middle. Good. So you can see that in that I deviated a bit, can't you? William, just imagine he's a tube of toothpaste and you're squeezing down that tube, yeah? Right. Squeeze all the way down to keep him on that line, yeah? Because you want to be disciplined now because even though it at this level, it doesn't matter if you're not quite on your line. You at but this level, when the written. when the angles get greater, yeah, it's essential you stay on the line. So I want you to be very disciplined, please concentrate. Right, tube of toothpaste, positive. We can do it. We can do it. A rhythm. Don't check. Tube of toothpaste and, and positive thinking. Tube of toothpaste, positive. <laughs> Tube of toothpaste, positive thinking. Tube of toothpaste, positive thinking. Oh, yes. Oh, that felt good. Better. Did that look straighter? <clears throat> I thought it was perfect. Corner? Corner, here, yeah, right. I thought the corners were quite good then, weren't they? I haven't got a flying change on that one. Again, we've started quite narrow with this corner because in a minute when the horse is when the horse is trusting its rider, Ooh. then we'll pull it a little bit wider. Again, on your line, yeah. Tube of think of your line and keep Positive. hold of the right rein. Positive think. Oh! Mr. Funnel. You're not gonna, training my horse very well, are you? I'm going to have to give you a good severe talking to in a minute if you do that again. I don't think he eyed up his line then. Actually, I don't know whether it was, I wasn't thinking of the tube of toothpaste enough or the positive thinking enough. Or I lost my rhythm. I don't know. Right. I'm helping you now. Left, right. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> Keep that left shoulder there. Oh, yes. I think it feels like a jumper, this one. Again? He's still thinking that way a bit, isn't he? Yes, I think I could do is. Help again, please, don't I? Is that a nice transition? Keep hold of the right rein, keep the left leg there. Ooh. Ooh, you ready to try it without the pole now? Once again. Do we have to? <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. He wants to jump that one, anyway. Right. Ooh. Tube of toothpaste. Maybe try what putting your stick in the way? other hand if he's going that way. Oh, right. Put my stick in the other hand. Ooh. See, I was thinking psychologically. <laughs> if I put my stick in that hand, it means I think I might run out. You see? I mean, there's lots of ways to look at this psychology. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, good boy. <clears throat> I'm just getting him used to the I mean, pats. Up your line to the bounce. And I want you to think when you jump your triple bar, is that too big for you? Is that right? You're happy with that? Because <laughs> I know you're only a novice. You're only a novice. I want you to think the minute you've jumped your triple bar. Oh, sorry, no, it's an elephant trap with a big ditch underneath. When you jump your big elephant trap, make sure you sit up, use your body because. So don't look for, for the elephants. bounce. Because I want you to be able to soften your hand to the bounce because he's got to be able to look and see what he's got to do. Yeah, you don't want to still be killing the pace to the bounce because where a lot of people to me go wrong is they don't get particularly if you're coming up to a coffin type fence or something similar to that, if you, you haven't killed the pace early enough, 
and you're still interfering the last three, trying to slow it, that the head comes up the last three. What you need to do is get it early enough so then you can soften the hand. Soften the hand. Good. Oh, Very good. Looking good now, aren't I? <laughs> Getting the psychology, I think. Can you not um, swear? You I swore. Swear. No. You swore. I said looking good now. No, you said, didn't, did, did he swear? There you go. Thank you very much. <laughs> I know, I yeah, That saved a big argument, didn't it? I mean, <laughs> that could have gone on for days. <laughs> well, it's obviously because you're mumbling and I couldn't hear you properly. See, oh, sorry, sorry, darling. I didn't realise I was a venting now. I'll have to get my pronunciation correct. Do you want... Oh, is it? Our heads. Oh, Tube of toothpaste on your line. Oh, tube of toothpaste. Shoulder. Oh, yes. Good. We're getting the hang of it. I might it, need one, someone in to help me. Getting the hang of it. Once again. On the line. Squeeze tube of the legs. Good. Ooh. Just take one of these away. Practicing the jump off turns there as well. I could have sworn you swore. <laughs> Maybe I need a yeah, well, hearing swear. aid. Right, same again. And then we're ready for badminton. Feel all the way, all the way. Toothpaste, positive thinking. Yes. Good. Oh. What about? Right. Now, can we... How, can, have, have I, am I sort of... Uh, yeah, you can have a rest have now. Have I got the seat sorted out? Well, I want... When, when we're coming to the course, OK? Right. It's good. It's good how it is. But uh, when you come and jump, your, you've got to imagine this is the lake at Badminton. Right. And this is yeah. a big drop in the water. Right, I yeah. could go with that, yeah. Just wait a minute, don't move, I haven't finished yet. <laughs> and I want you to... Is it a wonder that I swear sometimes? <laughs> what you've got to imagine is that the neck, head and neck, is a fifth leg. So when you jump a big drop into water, you've got to be ready to let the rain slide through your fingers and take your weight back, yeah? Right. And I, it's something I've had to work and, really and hard on. And don't drop your stick at the Be same time. <laughs> yeah, because I did used to, and I still do, find it very easy to get... <laughs> that sort of thing. Oh. <laughs> Slip your reins. Slip yeah, the reins. Sorry. Don't throw the reins, yeah? Yeah. All right. Because the, ho the horse has got to have the freedom in its head and neck to help it balance when it jumps a big drop. It. And yeah, when we're talking about cross-country riding, it is essential we stay in balance, but never ever get in front of the movement. So, wait, 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 wait. So if you, your leg comes back a bit there, where will your body come? <laughs> so be aware of, of the lower leg, yeah? And be ready, because at any stage, you might, they might stumble cross-country because of the rough terrain, yeah? So you've got to be ready to just get into that slight safety position. OK? Now, where, can everyone use their imagination then? So that's Badminton House over there, yeah? I'll be back for a gin in about <coughs> optimum 12 and a half minutes. This is the, the lake, yeah? Hopefully. Remember, that's the lake. If not, I'll walk across from the lake. <laughs> <laughs> right, so you're ready to go into the starting box. I'm looking, well, it's over by the 10 minute box. Because you interrupted me, I was about to start then. I've been through all the nerves and everything. Oh, right, here we go. Right. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, right, so you're in the starting box. Well, I'm waiting to go. Okay, five, four, Three, two, one, one and a, 
Want a new porter? <laughs> go! Go, go! Good luck. Bye-bye. <laughs> God, it's marvellous out in the tree. Oh, look at it. It's the tube of toothpaste. Tube of two positive thinking. Safety seat, case it trips. Oh, and group, chain, flying chain. Oh, oh, keep my rhythm. One, two, three, four, release. Sit back, yes. Oh, the water, oh my God. 10 meters, we're on time. High in the house. Oh, oh. God, dear, that was a bit of a splash, that one. <laughs> Ooh, tube of toothpaste. Oh, oh now, perhaps one to go at badminton. And we're clear. Come on, boy. Good Remember, boy. it's line. Well done in the lake. Concentrate. Right, right. right, right. Yes! Through the last. And it's through the three. Yes! Yes! I get a little bit of time to talk about show jumping. We've only got a short course, so I'm going to talk a little bit about distances. So if we, uh, we're going to, this is going to be number one, the badminton water. We're going to come round. Number two is going to be the style. Normally, if I walked a course, I'd walk the whole line that I was going to jump. So I'd walk into the corner. What we're going to jump? We're going to jump a related distance from this. We need to perhaps put a little bit more angle on that. So. We're, She's at least heading in the right direction, not that we want to make it too easy for her. And uh, we're going to, when we're warmed up over this fence, we're going to make it into an oxer. So as I said before, do I walk a distance, the horse lands here, every horse's stride is four yards. Obviously, depending on how big your horse is and how big your steps are. But, so basically, generally, as you get to jump horses around court, you, really, you, you learn if your horse has got a slightly longer stride, slightly shorter stride, but generally, this horse is, would be one, two, three, four. That would be one stride. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So with the four that I walked in the beginning, that's 16 yards. This would be where he'd take off on four strides. So that would be a nice four strides for him. So I I'm going to come I round. Do, I bet I do five there. <laughs> Probably, but you've just got to think positive, no hooking, staying a nice rhythm. So uh, now we've got a double. The same thing would apply if, if they put the jumps in the right place. We'd land here. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. So two strides, take off, a little bit short perhaps, but that'd be a normal two strides. So as I said, if, if you came around the corner, so if that was a takeoff point, a stride's four yards, so one, two, if I don't get run over, then that is, as, if you're completely wrong, that's as far as you can be out. So actually, if you alter one stride, one stride that much in four, you're going to have changed half a, half a stride. So we're going to come around the corner, and the elephant trap is now a triple bar, as you can see. And we're going to jump this triple bar, which is going to be related for Pip to jump the oxer again. So here we go. Land here. One, two, three, which is a bit boring because it's four again. We could have actually had one distance that was five, but anyway. How does he feel? Well, I think he says it's rather nice to have someone a bit lighter on him. <laughs> Oh dear, I can see the, I can see the jumps are going to get big tonight, darling. <laughs> <clears throat> they better not. So you can see, actually, there's a nice story with this horse while Pip's warming up. It belongs to one of my owners, who actually bought him at Zangerside as a foal, and uh, she just bought one foal, oh. and she's been. <laughs> You're a bit late with your change, then, Pip. They did it perfectly with me earlier, didn't they? I think I made a point tonight of how great I am at changes. Um, so she brought him as a foal and she's been lucky and hopefully it, it looks as though that in, you know, this year, the end of the year, I'd probably do some young horse international shows with him and 
probably as an eight-year-old, you know, he's got shows every sign that uh, he'll be good enough to jump Grand Prix and and uh, Nations Cups and that sort of thing. So she's been very lucky to buy one horse, and he is a lovely horse. I've got some foals by him. As I said, he's an approved uh, breeding stallion, and he's, he's very well bred. So. Um, you don't yeah. pat him too, he's not used to big pats, you know, just... <laughs> if you'd like to jump the cross pole, please. Oh. Is that you? <laughs> oh. Oh. That's good. We'll try and keep it smooth around the turn, as I told everybody. You slowed up when you come through the turn. Just try and come through your turn and We all know how I back. love to slow up, don't we? Yes, Pip does have a lot of time faults normally, <laughs> doesn't she? But luckily, she has... You? <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yes. good one, yeah. <laughs> luckily, she's got me. <coughs> uh, luckily, she does, she has... Just enough time, folks, that it didn't matter, but she likes to keep everybody sweating, I think. You still see, although it's not the end of the world, I like Pip, you can see she went quicker at the jump than she did before the jump, so I'd like her to try and keep the same pace through her turn and not increase the speed at the fence. So I want you to try and keep it so, so you stay smooth and on a rhythm. Oh! And how's the feeling? He's dinky. William's other horse, Mondrian. Oh, it's the biggest thing I've ever sat on. It's about 18 hands. <laughs> oh, oh! <laughs> that doesn't count. <laughs> can you, can you, do you wonder why I didn't let you ride him again? Good job the owner's not here tonight. That's what... You can see he's a very nice jumper. Jump the fence in the middle and come through your still. Still don't be defensive through your turn. You'll find a stride, just keep the same canter through the turn. As you can see, the pip's still slowing down a bit through a turn. Good, that's very nice. Right. It is, they have built it rather small to be honest with you, but what we can do, just to show the distances and everything, you pop round once now, you've warmed up, so what I'd like you to do, one over the Babington water, two the style, four strides to the Oxer. What? Two the style going that way? No. One. Oh, going down the hill. Two, three, well if we get some numbers, won't we? Four the double, five the triple bar, Six the oxer. Right. Uh, ding ding. Ding, ding, remember that there's 400 metres per second, the time allowed. And don't jump number one backwards. You've got to jump it that way. Do you know what you just said then? I've got to go very fast if I've got to go 400 metres no, in a second. 400 metres a minute. So. <laughs> you mean a minute? Yes. I, I'm pleased that you correct me when I'm wrong, darling. Oh, I'm going... Oh, right, OK. The fences keep getting wider and bigger every time she cheeks me. Oh, William, <laughs> stop it! <laughs> oh, oh, 
it's he's bright. In, he thinks it's fun anyway. As I said, he's, he's been on holiday since most of the year, Shasha. So. Yeah, that was a nice smooth turn. Oh, that's a galloping one. <laughs> I said I'd find that long. Oh. What? <laughs> God dear me. I think I need to do a circle. <laughs> he doesn't know which leg he's on. See, that's how flat work, you know, those ch late changes earlier on. He was late with his change, she's messed up the course. So it just enforces my... This is going to be a bit forward as well, Pip. If you go so slow on the corners... I have 400 metres a second then. <laughs> right, I think we could go up a little bit. And just tell me, you've not ridden the horse before. How do you, how do you feel? Um... I feel as though these distances feel very, very long. And I feel as though I'd like to... Can, you not go up? Can we not go big there? Because I'm galloping to that as it is. Right. Oh, dear. Mary. Thank you, Sarah. We're going to shorten this one for you. And just so it's a bit more technical, you can have five after the triple bar. Oh, my God. I don't actually tend to count beyond two. I tend to go... You can see in the, in the ring, that's the trouble. As soon as you get defensive around the turn and come out of your rhythm, then it messes the distances. You know, because Pitt was a bit slow through a turn, he didn't land going forward. Got too big a jump, didn't land going forward. It made the distance long. Don't go too big with a triple bar, actually, because it no, is a bit tight don't. off the turn. You can nearly leave that one, because she's going to have an extra stride after that one. Sorry about that. I think we could go a bit bigger here, couldn't we? I don't see why not. As soon as I've sworn, sworn so much this evening. So just, we just do the same with the back. So yeah, you actually look quite good in yellow. <laughs> right. Ding, ding. I'm going to call you Petal. <laughs> So is it sort of jump you get from your Aventus? What? You're supposed to be saying... Oh, oh why? I didn't do anything. Why is it bucket? <laughs> oh, I'm not... Oh, sorry. Right, OK. Serious. You're going the wrong way. I think you try and relax your thighs a little bit. Good boy. <coughs> right. That's quite big. Right. Come on, Kevin, don't let me down. So try, and, try a little bit more... He tends to cheat and drop behind your leg and, oh, and shorten his canter a little bit. So try and keep his canter as open as you can. And try and keep it a bit smoother than the last round. <coughs> don't push. Don't push. Just because you saw one, then. Yeah, that was a lovely jump, but don't push. When you see a stride, try, try not to push. Good. Got the distance a lot easier. That was a lovely jump. Don't push. Oh! Kevin, we've got to have five here. Don't push. I think, I think you should stop doing dressage and start show jumping. Oh, I've got to be serious, haven't I? <laughs> no, that was very good. I thought you did very well. It was all right. <laughs> <laughs> it jumped good. <laughs> good boy.
do anything. Why is it bucket? 